I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro Max for a solid three weeks now and I'm just your average tech consumer who pre-ordered this iPhone, received it on launch date in September 28, 2023. But if your attention span is extremely short to non-existent, don't upgrade if you have an iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max or above. Like seriously, you're fine. You're not missing out a ton. But if you want to find out why, keep on watching. Okay, so right off the bat, and coming from the iPhone 12 Pro Max right here, back in 2020, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is pretty snappy performance-wise, probably thanks to the brand new 3 nanometer A17 Pro chip. Now, I'm not gonna go into technical details on what that is, but all you gotta know is that it's fast, pretty advanced compared to the previous Bionic chip that Apple has been using on the previous generation iPhones. Apps open and loads fast, scrolling and screen transition is fast, everything is fast. It's so snappy that I felt like I was using my MacBook Air with M1 chips sometimes. They're pretty close. Like, it's that fast. Oh, and it's also got some ray tracing capabilities for gaming apparently, but I'll get into that in a sec. Now I do want to address the elephant in the room as Apple did acknowledge an overheating issue which were all over the news and I gotta admit, I personally encountered it as well. And during my first two weeks, especially when using the apps like Instagram and all that stuff, additionally, using an Android-specific USB-C cable seemed to trigger the overheating as well. But switching to my MagSafe charger and Apple-approved USB-C cable like the one for my MacBook Air or iPad Air basically resolved the problem. Apart from this though, the phone performs as expected. But speaking of MagSafe though, do you love the MagSafe feature of your iPhone and prefer traveling light with just your essential cards? Well, skip the pricey Apple option and check out the extra MagSafe card holder. This sleek wallet snugly fits three cards and cash too if you want. I've got my top two credit cards and my ID right in there. It securely attaches to MagSafe compatible iPhones like the iPhone 12 Pro Max, iPhone 15 Pro Max, or the iPhone 14 as an example. And it's pocket friendly while the magnet ensures it stays put. Plus the handy thumb slot guarantees quick card access so you won't miss a beat. If MagSafe is in your style though, but you're looking for a top-notch minimalist smart wallet, then Exter still got you covered. They offer an array of unique minimalistic and super cool looking wallet that won't break the bank. My favorite one is this aluminum card holder for AirTag so that I can keep tabs of my wallet using the Find My app on iPhone, in case I misplace them of course. And I love that it can hold so many cards and some cash as well. But seriously, Exter's selection is so vast and impressive and I'm sure you guys won't be disappointed. Visit Exter.com and use code LloydSim to score up to 25% discount, especially with their ongoing fall sale right now. All right, so the iPhone 15 Pro Max comes with a sleek titanium design that feels less industrial and more space age compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And while they may look similar from a distance, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is lighter with a matte texture that provides a more comfortable grip and avoids sharp edges. It also attracts fewer fingerprints compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max's stainless steel construction. One notable design though is the removal of the old silent switch, which is now replaced with a versatile action button that can be customized for various functions. Now it does take some time to figure out its most useful purpose but the camera function stands out as particularly handy for me at least since I do a lot of like random recordings or nonsense videos sometimes. In terms of size, the iPhone 15 Pro Max sports the same large 6.7 inch OLED display with an even thinner bezel this time offering an immersive visual experience. Now despite the shift from stainless steel to titanium and all that stuff, the phone does still feel premium but its durability somewhat raises questions. Jerry rigged everything's video demonstrated a potential bending issue where the back glass can easily crack, which raises concerns about its long-term durability. Handling the phone with one hand can be a challenge at times, especially if you have small hands. And it's worth noting that the back glass may be susceptible to cracking now, thanks to that video, especially in tight pockets or if you accidentally drop it in a weird angle. The iPhone 15 Pro Max provides an ample screen real estate though, making it ideal for power users. The 120 Hz ProMotion display and enhanced outer visibility improves the viewing experience, making tasks like reading text and enjoying HD and HDR content a pleasure. Also, the stereo speakers for these phones, they deliver pretty loud and bass-rich audio for an immersive multimedia experience, and I really like it. What's weird is after three weeks of seeing how great the user experience is though, 
It is somewhat still brought this inevitable feeling of disappointment, while the overall form factor of the iPhone 15 Pro Max is phenomenal. I feel like Apple didn't push this device once again to what it could have become still. Sure, they added USB-C, which can basically do a ton of stuff now, like have an extra storage, connect to your TV, charge another phone, connect the keyboard and all that functionalities that will basically make an Apple user's life similar to the Android folks' life. But I'm still surprised that there's still no split screen capabilities even with this gigantic display after so many years. I remember my Galaxy S5 from like 10 years ago. That already had a split screen capability. There's also still no Apple Pencil accessory integration which is kind of weird and really no difference at all aside from it being another blown up iOS experience, AKA iOS 17, which is actually not that bad this time around. I mean, it's nice to have that standby clock feature thing, right? Anyway, the more I use this phone though, the more it kind of felt like another wasted opportunity by Apple, but maybe eventually they'll get there. Now I do like the 120 Hertz ProMotion display as well as the USB-C, as it does make the phone feel more modern now compared to the iPhone 12 Pro models. With that being said though, having those features on this phone with a display this big could have made this phone an extreme game changer in 2023 and could have helped justify its price tag. All right, so gaming on the iPhone 15 Pro is seriously impressive though, warranting its own video, which I might consider actually in a few months, but the A17 Pro chip empowers it to handle AAA game titles like Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil Village, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and Death Stranding. While I'm not an avid mobile gamer though, it's still pretty cool to see these high quality console games run on a compact device. Though I do wish Apple would have integrated Xbox xCloud's native app rather than relying on the Safari browser for cloud gaming though, especially since I have the 256 gigabyte iPhone 15 Pro Max and prefer streaming over the native installs. But besides that, the gaming capability of the iPhone 15 Pro is pretty significant leap from its predecessor as it even has ray tracing now which is usually only seen in like true gaming graphics cards and stuff like that such as Nvidia and AMD so that's pretty cool. Now the iPhone 15 Pro Max has undeniably elevated its camera game this time around making it feel more like a fresh upgrade. Coming from the 12 megapixel setup of the iPhone 12 Pro Max right here, the iPhone 15's enhanced stabilization photo and video quality are more profound largely owing to its professional equivalent lenses, larger sensor, and 48 megapixel camera. The photos does appear sharper and better lit and the improvements might seem subtle to an average user. However though, the night photography truly shines likely due to its wider lens and bigger sensor. Also, zoom capabilities are a game changer now with the iPhone 15 Pro Max boasting a 5x zoom that's comparable to a 128mm professional camera lens. Now this is a significant leaf over the iPhone 12 Pro Max's 2.5x zoom allowing for a more detailed and close-up shots. Also, the multiple lens zoom options like 24mm, 28mm, and 35mm definitely enhances the device's portrait photography. Now the front camera maintains its 12 megapixel resolution but it seems to yield better selfies for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Maybe it's just my eyeballs, I don't know. But again, this might be all thanks to the Apple's Photonic engine which combines software and hardware innovations for better image processing, particularly in challenging lighting or complex color scenarios. Also one of the most exciting features is the ability to shoot in ProRes video though. It's an advantage for content creators, videographers, and it's comparable to using a dedicated vlogging camera like the Sony ZV-1 I'm using right now, or even a more expensive professional grade camera. This function empowers videographers to have greater control over color grading and correction during post-production. Okay, so the USB-C titanium design upgraded camera, specifically the five times zoom for the iPhone 15 Pro Max is no doubt the biggest selling point that Apple made during their event announcement for this phone. But is it truly worth picking up this phone over the other iPhones like, you know, the 12, 13, 14 or other 15 lineup? Honestly guys, after reading up a few articles, Reddit users posting all kinds of photos and select YouTubers out there doing comparison to truly validate my experience as well. I couldn't really see much difference large enough at all for an upgrade, especially if you're coming from an iPhone 12 Pro Max or maybe even newer. So with that said, if you're eyeing the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max this upcoming holiday season, expecting groundbreaking changes in the you know USB-C, titanium design, action button, camera, Compared to the previous iPhone Pro model series, temper your expectation, folks. It's a fantastic device, perhaps the best one yet since the iPhone 6 Plus, but 
for iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max owners, the incremental improvements might not justify the upgrade or the hefty price tag. For everyday use though, the differences might seem minuscule. However though, it truly shines for power users such as content creators, videographers, and those who rely heavily on their smartphones for work. So for such individuals, the iPhone 15 Pro Max definitely offers dope mobile computing experiences. But again, if you're not a power user like that, I guess just stick with your iPhone 12 Pro or maybe even your 11 Pro or whatever. Like, you know, you don't really need to upgrade it until basically Apple stops supporting it and stuff like that. Anyway, that is it for this review, guys. If you've reached this point or skipped to here, consider rewinding for more insights. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up and if you found this entertaining and useful, then subscribe down below you know, to support this channel and all that stuff. Also, don't miss out on my iPhone 15 Pro Max unboxing video in case you haven't seen it. I'll link it up there and also down in the description if you haven't seen it like I said. But anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Peace.